engineer 775 out here in the shop with my my big helper it's working away Elijah's getting getting big pretty soon I'll he's going with me <laughs> anyway we're off to um, a uh, a job and uh, usually takes me about a day of prepping in the shop and some of you have asked if this could be done um, what this is is if you have a four inch well a lot of times I find as people get closer to the coast they have four inch wells and um, four inch casing and what I end up doing is taking a simple pump cap and then adapting this is, this is going to be the solar submersible pump and then this is the way I kind of offset the wiring for my uh, low water sensors and my uh, the power down to the submersible pump and then I put a simple pump uh, down down here obviously but then I can put a motor on it too and that's what I'm doing here so getting this wired and ready um, using uh, the uh, latest simple pump setup for a 24 volt system and I was getting a float switch making sure it was right and you need to use a reverse logic uh, float switch in order for uh, it to turn off the pump when the tank is full so I had the wrong switch at first but so I'm gonna have a float switch to be able to control this so we can fill a big tank using the simple pump on um, you know, on the regular uh, hand pump cylinders and I'll also have a submersible pump in here hanging off of this brass here so this is all crammed in a four inch you got to do some creative filing and uh, grinding but it it fits so I have a I actually have an eye bolt for a safety rope under here it's a lot going on in this little tiny thing but there's room enough to put a submersible pump and a hand pump and a motorized hand pump all within a four inch casing I can't do a three inch casing but I can do a four inch so I, a lot of people along the coast of Texas Alabama Florida up the East Coast that have four inch wells this can be done and uh, we're gonna do another one Elijah you gonna come with me mm, I know not yet gonna be playing hooky from school all right well let's get back to work and get this thing prepped for the job I'll be hey folks engineer 775 here uh, found some nice uh, warm work in Alabama at an undisclosed location so we're putting in an off-grid water system and uh, I wanted to talk to you about you know doing a, a system for us that's this is eight hours from my house it's very difficult but when uh, I can work with a homeowner and he can get a local contractor to build a building that's behind me and we work together and I'll show you the drawing and get all the conduits and everything put in place according to our design uh, the job goes real smooth we can usually knock out a complete system in a couple of days we're wrapping up uh, this morning I'm going to show you around and even if we can't come get to your system because we've tried to we're trying to finish up the end of your projects and we just can't get to them all and we're thankful for that but um, hopefully this inspires you to to do your own and if we can help you in any way just let us know we'd be happy to supply you with pumps the know-how designs to get you um, with your water in an off-grid and sustainable fashion let me show you around like I said one of the first things we start with is a decent drawing we kind of go back and forth and design a pump house this is a great one because uh, we just worked everything into it uh, water storage we have uh, three pumps we've got a submersible pump that's a solar pump at the well right there and then we've placing a Dankoff piston pump and we're also using a 24 volt simple pump so we have two ways to fill the the cistern over over here where's my cistern right there and uh, with uh, two float switches and then we have the reliable piston pump uh, to pressurize the bladder tank we're using two 245 amp hour 12 volt batteries and then we have our solar for charging and our solar for water pumping so being able to work out things like where's the the conduit runs and everything's already in the concrete it's a dream to show up and everything is according to the drawing and within 
you know, an hour we had everything set in place where it, where it needs to go, including the solar. And let me just show you around quickly. Again, you've seen a lot of this, so I won't bore you to death with it. But uh, a lot of times our systems look like one, but there's two things going on. Panel on the left is for the submersible. Panel on the right is for battery charging. And this is the battery charging disconnect. And then here's the controller, which just woke up. Just got enough light to wake up. And it's the pump's on. It's starting to pump. Even with the sunlight, the sun not coming up, we've got a really good solar window here, but you see the sun is it's early. It hasn't come up, but it's still pumping water right now. All right, the building, straight, straight forward. Nice and warm in here, partially due to the tank. And so what we're doing, again, according to the drawing, we've got a bladder tank in a corner. We've got a Denkhoff piston pump here that I need to finish plumbing. We're not done yet. And then we've got the 24 volt simple pump. The cool thing about this is that we are using, and I hope you can see it, the Morningstar ProStar 24 volt charge controller. Okay, I uh, hope you can see it is, uh, charge light is on and we're at the batteries are at like 25, 25.2, they were 25.1 when I started this. So we are charging, even though there's not a lot of sun out on the panel yet. 24 volt pump, the, what we've done with this is we've added a reverse logic uh, float switch that will turn this pump on, on and off. So we have two float switches, simple mechanical float switches that control one the submersible and the other one the simple pump. And the entire system is 24 volt. So if the submersible needs to be rebuilt in years down the road, we can do that, but the person we don't they don't go without water because they can turn a simple pump on. You can unbolt that motor and put the handle on and use it as a manual pump if everything fails. Okay, that's pretty much it. Standard DECA 888D batteries here for us and shutoffs and unions everywhere. So anyway, and that's and the other one of the key things is you know, we did the ceiling height. We didn't have to remove the ceiling, I mean the roof, or drill any holes because we had uh, enough height. And to get the simple pump in, you need uh, ten and a half feet uh, to clear this pumping cylinder and the drop pipe. And we had two inches here. So the gentleman was great to work with, and just to be able to go back and forth and, and fine tune the design just saves days of labor and tearing up this existing structure so um, I think we're good and that's it so if you need help on any long distance projects long distance meaning that I can't get to you or don't want to drive 20 hours to get to you with all the equipment um, be happy to walk you through how to do one of these systems and again we supply all the equipment for you and the design and how to install it and that's it so we're going to wrap up and head home here. Okay, here we are on the inside of the cistern, pumping away. Just pumping probably three, four, five, four gallons a minute. I've got my two float switches. One is for the submersible pump, and one is for the simple pump 24 volt option. And that's the reverse logic. That's why it's yellow. And that Septronics is the regular one. So I have two ways to fill this tank. First time pumping water as well as just drilled, so it's a little cloudy, but it's pumping beautifully. And we've already tested our float switches, everything's good. So, all right, next. All right, we're wrapping up with our multiple pump long distance water project. If I can help you in any way, let me know. Um, these are just real reliable systems, piston pumps and um, rebuildable. Everything I have is pretty much rebuildable if it does fail long term. A simple pump, 24 volt. Uh, 24 volt seems to be a sweet spot for pumping water for the equipment that's available reliability wise and sustainability wise. So we're good to go. We're going to head home. But uh, again, this gentleman was very, these folks were great. Um, just exchanging a few emails, we were able to design a, a nice little pump house that worked for them. It'll be a garden shed, pump house, and they'll have plenty of water. So they have water stored, 1,000 gallons, three or four different ways to pump that water. 
and um, they'll be they'll be set for years. And that's about it. I uh, hope you got something out of this. At least, hopefully, it inspired you to do your own off-grid water system. All right, Engineer Seven Seven Five signing off.